Good morning, Franklin West. I have another video for you today. This one is about how to find the so total surface area of a cylinder. And so I have a can of soup today to represent the shape of the cylinder. The cylinder has three parts that we really need to be aware of to calculate the areas. So that is the top, which is a circle, the bottom, which is also a circle of the same size. These two circles are the same size. And then the sides of the cylinder, um, which it takes a visualization to imagine what would it look like if you opened up the cylinder and laid it flat. And so the label comes pretty close to representing the total sides of the can. So we're going to use the label as if that was the cylinder unraveled. And notice the shape that it makes. If you unravel the sides of a cylinder, you will create a rectangle. And so this is the third piece that we need to find area of. This one you're probably most familiar with. In terms of calculating the surface area, we would just call it area, and we would do length times width. And so in the video, I've got formulas and labels as a key that you can use to get all the information you need to know. Now, maybe I should unravel that one more time. If you were to imagine this coming back together, notice this edge of the rectangle is actually the circumference of the circle. It's the perimeter of the circle around the can. Okay, so we're going to need to know the circumference of the top of the cylinder, right? And we need to know the formula for area of a circle. And so there's a lot going on here, but we're going to break it up into steps. And remember that we are working with area, so we're going to be squaring our dimensions. So in this video, we're going to work with centimeters as our length. So if I'm doing centimeter dimension times another dimension in centimeters, our final answers for area will be centimeters squared. So always remember to report your final units and have a calculator ready. See you in the video. Let's jump into the problem. So I have the board set up for us today, and I did put a can of soup to remind us from what we just went over in the prior segment that we have a cylinder shape, and we're trying to find its total surface area on the outside of it. A later video, we'll look at how much volume this shape encompasses. So for now, we'll take a look and we'll see that the top of the cylinder has a circle, and then in this view, you cannot see the bottom circle. And those two are represented in this generic diagram. And then the label that I was able to unravel to try to represent the actual cylinder opening up and becoming flat um, is represented here also in this area. Um, I've also drawn out the separate shapes in which I can start to highlight right now. So for example... If I can color code here, this top and bottom, they're from different parts of the cylinder, but they are equivalent. They're the exact same size to each other, these two circles, and that's what these are represented here. Those are the separate items brought out so that you can see the shapes and calculate the area of each shape separately. And then in within here, maybe I'll go in yellow, the sides of the cylinder are represented here in this rectangle. So again, if you were to cut the cylinder straight down and then open it up flat, this is the shape that you would create. So now that we've aligned those together, let's go through and apply take a quick look at this key. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because at this point you could pause the video and pay attention to the details that are hiding in here and lift out what you need. So this is just double checking that you understand all the symbols, radius and diameter, and that the diameter is twice the length of the radius. So two radii next to each other is the full diameter, right? And from here out is a radius, okay? And from here to here is the total diameter. That's when you cross through the center of the circle. The height of the system is described here, the height of the cylinder, which will match the height of the rectangle here. That's the height of the can. The circumference has to do with the perimeter of a circle, is right here, and it has its own formula. Now notice this perimeter, this circumference, 
is the actual length. We talked about this in the prior segment also, that if you were to take this rectangle and curve it around itself to re recreate the cylinder shape, this would match the circumference of the circle. So C is our circumference, and we'll put it here to represent that these are all related. And those formulas are here. This all involves pi, and area also is in here, because we're going to calculate the area of this segment, and this segment, and this segment. We actually don't have to do the circles twice separately. We could just calculate the area of one and then double it, because that circle occurs twice. So in here, you'll see that you've got pi, and pi is a Greek letter that is the ratio of circumference to diameter that is consistent for every circle, no matter its size. That the change of how the circumference and diameter shift together in a circle is always a constant ratio named pi. That um, in the calculators is an irrational number. It goes on forever and ever and ever without any repeating. And yet in our calculation, we might just call it 3.14, or better yet, in your calculator, you'll find the pi button, and at that moment, I'm gonna do a better pi, at that moment, you will hit the pi button next to your number, and it will calculate it for you using as ac most accurate representation of the value of pi. Okay, so why don't we jump in and talk about these areas? So. Here's our example problem. We're looking for the total surface area of the given cylinder that has a height of six centimeters, so H is six, and the diameter is 10. Well, <clears throat> if we are working an area, area is about radius, not diameter. So that's why it's helpful to understand the relationship of radius to diameter, and that radius is half of the diameter. So it might be good to make a note here that H is six, that D, whoop, D is 10, if you wanted to use the circumference formula that has diameter in there, and that R is half of the diameter, which is five. Okay, so n notice though that what I've created here won't be, it'll be look more like a tuna can. <laughs> the height is six centimeters, but the diameter is 10 centimeters. So the tomato can is not a literal representation here, but it will give us the general example as we need. All right, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and find the area of this rectangle here. So the height is six. we need to find the circumference. So we go to this formula, circumference equals two pi r, or we could look at it as circumference equals diameter times pi. So in this case, that'll be the diameter, which is 10 with the pi symbol. I'm gonna be more inclined just to leave the pi symbol throughout all my work and then only at the end plug it into the calculator. That way I'm not having to deal with really long numbers that I am forced to round and repeated rounding in our work will always distort our answer. So we wanna try to round only at the end. So the formula for area is length times width. That's a formula I realize I did not include in the blue key, but I'll put it here now. So area is length times width. So this rectangle here is six times 10 pi, which is equal to 60 pi. So we are a third of the way done because we've got these two shapes now that we've got to calculate. But again, maybe we're only halfway done because this shape here, we only have to calculate one time and then double it. So the area of this shape here, this circle, is pi r squared. So this time we do need the radius rather than the diameter, and that is r is five. I'm just gonna pop into a different color real quick so that you can see where I'm writing. So the area of a circle is going to be the radius, which in this case is five. 
and it will be 5 squared times pi for pi r squared, which will get us 25 pi. This occurs twice. So if this area is also 25 pi, then we can just combine those together. We could just double the 25. So from above, above we have a total of 50 pi. And for the sides of the cylinder, we have 60 pi. So sliding again into another color, 50 pi. plus 60 pi will get us 110 pi. And this is the moment where I would say, let's pop that into a calculator. And so if your calculator is handy, this might be a good time to find the pi button. A scientific calculator, something more than a grocery store calculator will have this button. So you can type in 110. And then for me on my TI 83, I just hit second pi or second carat, um, it's a hidden up above icon in there. And so I literally just type in 110 pi, so my calculator input looks like that. My calculator knows that because I didn't put a math symbol here and these two are next to each other, that they're multiplying. But you could put in a multiplication symbol here if you wanted. And what we get as an outcome from the calculator is 345.58. Eight. I'm rounding. It actually goes on forever because of the irrationality of pi. And then this is our final numerical answer. Now all along the way we had units. Six centimeters, five centimeters, ten centimeters, and so on. So that when we did six centimeters times ten centimeter pi, that actually gave us 60 pi centimeter squared. Quite a lot of notation here. And that's true up here, centimeter squared, 25 pi centimeter squared. So we can actually add up all those centimeter squareds for our total area. And that is how you calculate the surface area. There is a formula that goes with this and I will type it right above the purple box. And the formula for surface area of a cylinder, if you do like the formula, is literally what we did. You find the area of circle one and notice that it occurs twice. So there's two of them. So it's two times the pi r squared. I have to do the caret symbol because I can't do the superscript for squaring. And I'm gonna add to that one rectangle that has a height, but the length is a circumference measurement. So it's going to be two pi r h, because two pi r is the circumference, and then the h is the height. And that is the total formula of your cylinder. So you can really work this in either way. You can memorize the formula and understand its parts, or you can break out the cylinder into its parts and just total up all three areas as they come. Well, I hope you found that video to be helpful for what you needed. Never hesitate to reach out to let me know how you're doing and what topics you would like to see next. And as always, do your best, get your work done. You're all wonderful people. Have a great day.